Blessed day to everyone and welcome to our worship service this morning. How are your hearts now as you come before the Lord? I hope we are ready and as we approach our Lord this fifth Sunday in Lent, let us humbly remember God's great mercy for us. As Daniel chapter 9 verse 9 to 10 reminds us, To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness because we have rebelled against Him and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by following His laws which He set before us. And so with this in mind, let us now rise and begin our worship by singing hymn number five, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Our Lord deserves all the praise and glory. Before we proceed, why don't we greet one another with a good morning first. And to those who are at home, good morning to you as well. Okay, let us now proceed with a greeting. The Lord be with you. Praise be to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless the Lord who forgives all your sins. Let us now prepare our hearts as we pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Shall we now pray together our collect of the day? Together. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found.
through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now be seated as we hear from the lessons. Our first reading is taken from Psalm 86, verses 12 to 17. You may turn your pew Bibles to page 513. Psalm 86, verse 12. I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your mercy toward me, and you have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, the proud have risen against me, and a mob of violent men have sought my life, and have not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in mercy and truth. O oh, turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Show me a sign for good that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. The word of the Lord. Our second reading for today is taken from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 to 13. Romans chapter 14, verses 1 to 13. If you are using the Pew Bibles, it can be found in page 984. Romans chapter 14, verse 1. Receive one who is weak in the faith, but not to disputes over doubtful things. For one believes he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Let not him who eats despise him who does not eat, and let not him who does not eat judge him who eats, for God has received him. Who are you to judge another servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Indeed, he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day, observes it to the Lord. And he who does not observe the day, to the Lord he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. And he who does not eat, to the Lord he does not eat and gives God thanks. For none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge one another any more, but rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, persevering in the Lord's will can sometimes feel lonely uh, amidst the difficulty and the conflicts. But we must always remember that our Christ sees and we have the body of Christ to cheer us on. And so uh, to remind us of this truth, uh, we have our choir to render the anthem, I Cheer You On.
pray we were encouraged by that wonderful anthem. Now let us all rise and hear the proclamation of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is taken from Luke chapter 9 verses 51 to 56. Chapter 9, verse 51. Now it came to pass, when the time had come for him to be received up, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And as they went, they entered the village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You do not know what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated, and we are thankful once again that the Lord has led Pastor Jonathan Banzuelo to be with us this morning, and uh, let's give the time to him to give us the message. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, good morning. Now, this morning, I was given the responsibility to talk uh, about Bearing with one another, it has been taken from Romans chapter 14. So I've decided to uh, simplify the message by talking about the topic, patience. Now, probably it begs the question, why do I have, uh, why do I have to add patience to my life? Well, uh, number one, it upgrades, it improves your character. You learn humility, you learn respect, you learn consideration towards others, and definitely, if you have patience, you will be able to serve. God can use your life. Secondly, when we talk about patience and you add this as a component to your human relationships, it helps make you, uh, get you closer to people. Now, you have to remember this. Pride makes the relationship have a wider gap. In patience, it helps in the interaction. It helps also in us being close to one another. So let's talk about patience. I'll be reading from uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and this is found in verses 4 to 7. Most likely, as you look at the verses, you'll be thinking, isn't this for weddings, uh, engagement ceremonies? But I would like to clarify the context of 1 Corinthians 13. As much as we can use this as a principle for love in general, it was about a congregation in Corinth. They have so many disputes. They are a congregation with a lot of conflicts. And Apostle Paul talked about love. And when he was talking about love, he was giving them an idea of what they needed to apply in their relationships to make it stronger so that their connection and witness for the Lord will be better. Look at what's written here. Love is patient and kind. Love uh, is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in the right. 
Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. When you look at uh, love here, you have to understand that in order to apply it, you have to remember two basic things. That is what we, have, what we, we call the proactive encouragement. If you would like your relationships to be strong, and if you say you're truly a loving person, it's not only in relation to attraction. Now, sometimes that's the superficial part. That's face value. For example, oh, I like the gadget, or I, I like the new technology. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, love ko na yan, right? You see a teacup pomeranian. It's a cute animal. Oh, I like this animal. Love ko na yan. Uh, sometimes we use that for people. I like that person's look. Love ko na yan. Well, I'm not saying that that is not needed. Attraction is initially the entry point of a relationship. But you have to remember, if you want to have an established relationship, the proactive uh, elements that you need to put in is you have to be patient with that person. You have to treat that person with kindness. So that's what you call the proactive uh, instructions. And yet there's also the preventive instructions. Love is not jealous, proud, or boastful. These things have the element of selfishness. Most of the time, jealousy, pride, and boasting has something to do with what you want, how you want yourself to be perceived by people. Now, that has become the problem in the Corinthian congregation. Because of pride, jealousy, and boasting, it created stress fractures in their relationships. And this is also another thing that they needed to overcome. So from selfishness, you have to learn selflessness. Love is not rude. Now you have to remember that if there is respect in your treatment of people, when you talk to that people, uh, to that person, you become considerate. When you treat that person, you treat that person in a sense is uh, it's a better way of approaching or uh, interacting with the individual. Take away respect. You will be rude in how you talk to that person. You will be rude in how you behave in front of that person. So remember, there is a proactive element in loving and there is a preventive element in loving if you would like the interaction or the relationship to be stronger. Patience among them. I like what Joyce Meyer wrote. Uh, this is what he, uh, she wrote in relation to patience. Patience is not simply the ability to wait. It is how we behave while we are waiting. You agree? Uh, sometimes, you cannot move the process along. You want to. You're interested in your own time and importance. That's true. We all have that. But the problem is, we have to wait. And in the waiting time, that's the time that somehow certain manifestations of our character comes out. It's okay if it's the good part, but there are many times it's, not the, uh, it's the not so good part that comes out. How do you define immaturity? Immaturity, most of the time, defined like this. It is your inability to delay and deny gratification. If you don't get what you want at that specific time that you want it, sometimes you, you see children, you bring them to the mall, they like to, to buy something and you're teaching them a lesson or probably you don't want to purchase that item for the child. The child sometimes have tantrums, right? But I'm not justifying the tantrums, but you have to understand they're immature. They're children. They still have to learn. But tantrums are not limited to kids. Adults also have tantrums. You agree to this? And that's the reason why we need to behave properly. And a mature person uh, seems to be expected to have control. So Joyce Meyer's saying is very important. Patience is not simply the ability to wait. It is how you behave while you are waiting. Let's look at another passage. It's coming from the Old Testament, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 29. Whoever is patient has great understanding, but one who is quick-tempered displays folly. Now, this passage is called a contrast. What benefits you get from patience and definitely what is the consequence if you don't have patience. Now, drawing from this simple principle, Patience, I believe, is God's way to teach us to remedy our impulsiveness. Let me repeat that. Patience is something that God wants you and me to develop so that we will be able to deal with our impulsiveness. Okay? So, uh, this is, if we focus on that, it will help us. Also, patience is a form of action. 
Why is it like that? No, it's stated in Scripture. Patience is a form of action. Well, let me uh, use patience in waiting for the Lord. You know, we as Christians, we are waiting for Christ's second coming, right? And many people have this mindset. He will come. I have faith in that. So I will be waiting. That's good. But that's not the only thing that the Bible instructs us into doing. You have to remember that as the Lord is still no, uh, about to come, in the Bible, we're being instructed to live faithfully for Him. How about our maturity in character? How about the strength of our relationships? How about our service? How about our fruitfulness in the faith? Because remember, waiting uh, upon the Lord, upon His coming, is uh, actually instructed in the parable of the talents. In the parable of the talents, what do you find Jesus talking about? He was talking about three servants, all entrusted with a big amount. One was given five talents. It's a silver currency. The other one was given two talents. The other one, one talent. And then their master left. There is an anticipation he will return. But what did they do? The one with the five talents made use of his master's money and then doubled it and gained five more. The one with the two talents also made his master's money work and then he gained two talents more. The one with the one talent simply dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. The master returned. Upon the return of the master, there was now an accounting. The one with the five talents approached the master and said, here's the five talents you have entrusted to me and here's the five talents. You know what uh, greeting, that, uh, what commendation he received? Enter into your master's happiness, you good and faithful servant. Same thing with the second servant. But the one who dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money became defensive. What did he say? You're a bad master. You sow where you do not, uh, you reap where you did, you did not sow. So he was accusing the master. He was being defensive. But actually, the master was very kind uh, to them as servants. I mean, they're not property owners. As servants, they were simply relegated the task that their master would like to give to them. But they were given an important trust. They were to take care of his money. And that is something very personal. And it's not just an amount of money. It's a good amount of money. And they were expected to be faithful in the handling of it. But he kept accusing his master. And then when he was com uh, con confronted, he was not given commendation. He was condemned. You wicked, lazy servant. Meaning, he did not make good use of that. So, you and I, as believers in the Lord, yes, we are anticipating the Lord will indeed arrive soon. The day and the hour is unknown, but we have to await that with anticipation, full of hope, and we know He will come. And you believe that He will come, and yet, how prepared are you? Have you been living a faithful life that when He arrives, He will give you a commendation instead of a condemnation? In the Christian life, patience is a form of action. You're not simply standing there and waiting. You need to control. You put off the things that are not appropriate in the Christian life. You need to be faithful in doing what is necessary. You put on the things that will help your faith grow and mature. This is how patience is applied in the faith. Now, let's look at the three aspects of how we can apply patience. Number one, patience with others is love. You know, it's very hard for us to truly anticipate how people will react or interact with us. We do not control circumstances, correct? But then if we have the ability to truly adjust, we can somehow uh, relate, serve, and even accept people in our lives. I was talking to a person, I think it was January, early this year, uh, he's saying, Pastor, I'm having a hard time now. I said, why? Yung father ko, uh, na. So, has, ha, is having dementia. So, he's saying, I'm caring for my dad. He does not recognize me all of the time. And he's behaving in a different way now. He constantly pushes me and I get hurt. Uh, and I have to clean him up. But I'm doing this because I remember when we were young, my father was taking care of us. 
And when he was not yet losing his memory, he's a very kind father to me. And I have to also show my love for him. I have to learn patience to be able to uh, at least reciprocate towards my dad how he has loved me and treated me when I was younger, when he was not like this. Imagine, that's not an easy thing to do. But we understand in human interaction, if we're patient with others, it's a manifestation of love. Second, patience with self is called hope. Well, sometimes when we are discouraged because we fail, or sometimes when we get rejected, we have this self-critical personality wherein we blame ourselves. We think we are hopeless. But then, you look at the Lord and His promises in Scripture. What do you find? The Lord is actually telling you that He has a plan, a purpose for your life. He has invested so many things in you, you have potentials. And uh, it takes time to develop them. But if you truly have diba, that belief in the promises of the Lord, and if you comply and cooperate with the program and the purposes of God, be patient with yourself. Allow yourself to undergo that training, that process, and eventually you will see yourself much, much more improved in the will of the Lord. But you have to be patient with yourself. And patience with self is hope. Now, Patience with God is faith. Now, maybe you're intrigued by that line. But uh, let's focus on prayer. You remember in one of my preachings here, I said, God answers our prayers in four ways. If the request is wrong, God will say no. If the timing is wrong, God will say slow. If you are wrong, something wrong with your character, God will first say grow. But if the request is right, the timing is right, and you are right, God will say go. He's not going to uh, be a stingy God. He's going to be generous towards you. But again, His conditions should be met at His own uh, perfect timing. But when we request, when we pray to God, when do we want the answers to be given? Honestly. Many days later, or do we want it immediately? Well, if we're going to be honest, we want it to happen immediately. We would like to get the answers as much as possible now. But again, if you trust in the Lord, whenever He's going to answer this, you hold on to Him and you rely on Him, that He knows better than you are. Remember, He is God and you are not. And a person who truly has faith in God will still follow, will still continue on. I remember Apostle Paul. When he was used by the Lord, he was even used uh, to dispense of supernatural gifts. There was a person who fell from a window when he was preaching. He prayed for that guy, got revived, and lived again. But he himself went to Christ and asked him three times to remove his thorn in the flesh. Most likely, it's a form of sickness. But each time he came to God, the answer given to him, he said, was a no. That was a painful experience. For me, it's enough for me. Isang tawag ko dyan sa Tagalog, pwede kang magkaroon ng spiritual na tampo. How do we manifest this? If we don't get what we want, we try to emotionally blackmail God. How? You don't want to answer my prayer, I won't read the Bible anymore. <laughs> I won't attend fellowship anymore. I won't go to church anymore. Sometimes we're trying to do this to God. He does not lose out on anything when we do that. We're the ones who will lose out on that. But look at Apostle Paul's patience. Yes, the three times he requested the answer of God for each time is a no. But then, because he was waiting for the Lord's reply, and he trusted the Lord's process, we are now able to read the continuation of that passage. And God said to him, But my strength will be made perfect in your times of weakness. You understand this? If he wasn't patient, he simply left the ministry, gave up on trusting God. We wouldn't have that documented. The guy has great faith in God. And that's the reason why now we're reading that. He was uh, used by God in that particular passage because he trusted God so much. Now, how do we grow in patience? So let's look at how we can apply patience uh, with each other. The first one. Learn to accept discomfort. You know, when we do not ha uh, have yung ideal situations, no? 
circumstances are not as we expect them to be, we're having an issue with that. And that's the time that sometimes our immaturity manifests. I'd like to tell you a story, something that happened to me. This is about two decades old. There was a time that uh, our family, we went to the mission point in Palawan. Now, there's a church there who knew about it and uh, I requested my dad. He said, can, my, uh, can we invite Pastor Jay to speak at our youth camp? So I, I said yes. So when we went there, I brought with me a very big bag. Funny thing was, it's the outskirts. I mean, from Puerto Princesa back then, you ride a baby bus. And it's not air-conditioned. The roads are dusty during that time. And uh, I brought clothes that are very formal. Something like this. <laughs> I even brought my leather shoes. Because I'm thinking it's a church uh, context, so I, I, I might as well be dressed for the occasion. Not realizing that, of course, it's a provincial church. And not only that. I was told when I was already at the church, we won't be holding the camp in the church. We will be going to an island. No? So I'm thinking to myself, island. Now, we rode a big banka, passed through a river, and it's supposed to be going out to the ocean, and then we will find that island, the venue for the camp. So I was asking the people who were around me, uh, we don't have tents here. Where will we sleep? Ah, pastor, palm leaves are uh, abundant there. No? We can chop them up and then we can sleep underneath. Uh, palm leaves. <laughs> there are about 200 or so delegates. Second, sabi ko, I, uh, in this big banka, I was riding in that banka, there are sacks of rice. Uh, what do we eat? Vian. Of course, you, you need ulam. Ah, pastor, they will uh, fish there in the island. And they brought air guns with them. So maybe we can eat birds or squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, what kind of youth camp will this become? Uh, we were not able to reach the island. There were several uh, bankas. The one I'm riding, which uh, holds also the rice, several sacks of it, sank. Hindi naman sobrang lalim. But uh, when uh, we were already in the water, I had to get off the banka. Uh, the mud in the water was about waist deep. And at, uh, it was a summertime, so the water level was quite low. Every time I pulled out my leg from the mud, eels were coming out. So it was really lush, no? Yung, uh, wildlife in that uh, river. Um, you know uh, Palawan Crocodile Farm? If you've been there, you saw the skeleton of the big crocodile, right? It was caught in that river many, many years ago prior to this story. And then, so I was asking the people whom I, I was carrying a very big bag. The, the bank of the river was quite high because again, it's low tide and it's a summer. The water levels are low. I asked them, aren't there any crocodiles here? I was concerned. They said, oh, Pastor, don't worry about that. Only small crocodiles. I started to run and I was able to get up the embankment very quickly. They said, why have you run up, Pastor? But can I Sabi ko, small crocodiles have parents. <laughs> I don't want to meet the father and the mother of those small creatures. Uh, I was really feeling irritated, uh, annoyed, everything was wet. And I'm thinking, this shouldn't push through anymore. It's a failure. But then they were insisting on continuing on with the camp, but no longer in that island. Uh, we go back to the church and we do it. You know what? I learned a valuable lesson. If I did quit, I would have seen the fruits that were born out of that particular ministry. But I have to admit, it was very uncomfortable. And that discomfort almost showed the bad side of who I am. Right? So if we would like to grow in patience, you have to accept the discomfort. Not everything is as you anticipate it to be. Not everything is ideal. But we need to learn to adjust. Now, look at James chapter 1, verses 2 to 3. At first, when I was reading this, I find it rather odd how James looks at uh, trials. He says, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for a great joy. Uh, what kind of a perspective does the guy have? Now, look at Apostle James talking about the second part. For you know 
that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow, right? The mindset, your beliefs needs to change because your beliefs, the things that are in store in your mind will affect your behavior, your attitude, and your interaction. And I think when James was writing this, his mindset was totally focused on something else. The process is going to help me in my maturity. And this is necessary. And uh, as uh, most experts will tell you, when we talk about patience, patience is usually born out of irritation. If you have irritation and you learn to deal with the irritation, then you find yourself becoming patient, right? Now, let's look at the second. How do we grow in patience? Practice the discipline of forgiveness. Now, this one has something to do with interaction with fellow men. Now, the first one, the patient person gives God time to act. I think Apostle Paul understands this very well. You know, at the early part of his ministry, Paul had a tandem. The name is Barnabas. And they wanted to go to the Gentile territories to do missions work and minister. So they brought along with them a young man. The name is John Mark. The Mark you read in the gospel as, as one of the gospel writers. Now, when they were in Cyprus, because Barnabas was Cyprian, most likely they ministered in that locality based also on the uh, uh, desire of Barnabas to have his... Uh, uh, family hear about the good news. But after Cyprus, which is an island resort, di ba, parang pag sinabi, do you want to minister? Where? Siargao, Boracay, El Nido. Yes! <laughs> I mean, of course, you know, we're humans. We're thinking about uh, us being used to uh, save souls. But uh, of course, uh, it's good also to have some r, &R. <laughs> It's a nice place. No, so, while in Cyprus, everything was okay. But they have to move on deeper into Gentile territory. They have now to traverse the road to Pamphylia. That particular road during the time that they were going to do this mission was not an easy road to take. It was actually known that that location has so many insects that malaria was plaguing this area. And that's why when people are saying the thorn in the flesh of Paul most likely was either an eye irritation or probably malaria if it was a sickness. Not only that, bandits frequent this location. So your life will be endangered. So imagine, these are the things that you will experience. John Mark decided to go home. That did not sit well with Paul. That's why in the second missionary journey, Paul partnered with Silas and Barnabas continued on with the work with John Mark, but they took separate routes in the second missionary journey. Paul did not want to have John Mark again join them. Sabi ni Chrysostom, most likely Mark during that time missed his mama. <laughs> I mean, he was young and probably there was fear. He did not like the discomfort and he went home. And Paul being a dedicated person, and in that sense, no, he was also very uh, know, passionate in what he wanted to do for the work. Uh, he felt that that was abandonment. But that was him. That was how he looked at John Mark in his earlier years. But later on, Mark grew not only in age, in stature, but he grew in maturity. And as he was writing the churches before, among those he was commending for being faithful in serving the Lord was John Mark. Imagine, no? Uh, that's how we are as humans. We profile people. We have expectations of people. If they cannot deliver, we feel frustrated. Well, that's the reason why we need to practice patience. Second, the patient person considers the consequences before he or she acts. Probably, this is true for all of us, that because of our impatience, we blow up. The emotions, especially the negative emotions like jealousy, anger, irritation, name them. Uh, if you cannot control yourself and then you allow these negative emotions to overtake you, you will actually act sometimes in a crazy way. Diba? You remember at uh, this pulpit I said to you before, mayroong Filipino saying, gaano ka man katama, kung habang pinapatunayan mong ikaw ay tama, mukha ka namang may tama, mali ka pa rin. <laughs> Make sense? Diba? And uh, whenever the emotions, diba, they tend to, uh, to temper down, 
And then you look back, you see the damage. Damage in relationships, damage with your reputation, because sometimes you do things, you no longer are able to control your behavior. So even the way people perceive you got damaged. And that's the reason why a patient person considers the consequences before he or she acts. Now the third. Before that, let's read Ephesians 4.2. Very good instruction. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. That's the reason why Apostle Paul also, who wrote this uh, uh, passage, uh, wrote in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7, love is patient. Because if we are able to adjust with people, that's a manifestation of love. And that's also a, manifestations, a manifestation of patience. Now, let's go to the third. How do we grow in patience? Now, remember, there is purpose in the process. You need to increase your capacities to be able to truly apply patience. And this is the struggle that we all need to, over, uh, to, to experience. We all need to learn from. But if we are able to adjust and increase our capacities, we will become better. Not only our characters will be upgraded, our interaction will improve. Number one, increase your pain capacity. Minsan kailangan mong magtiis. Now, let me remind you, I'm not uh, uh, encouraging you to be abused. That's not it. Abuse is different. If you don't have the ability to make a decision because you're being forced into a decision or an, a situation, that's abuse. But here, even though you have an option, you, ha you can make the decision to actually leave, not adjust, it's up to you. But here, the point is, if you increase your pain capacity, you're actually trying to move forward despite of the difficulty. It's a decision you would like to willfully make. Second, increase your relationship capacity. Uh, there are many relationships that got ended in a bad way. Yes, you don't see eye to eye. Yes, you may have different opinions about things. But it does not mean you become disrespectful. It does not mean you have to be hurtful. You can part ways still being respectful. You know, there's a song. Narinik uh, yung line. The one who sang it, I think, was Justin Timberlake. He says, what goes around comes around. What does that mean? So I'm interacting with a person now. We don't see uh, eye to eye. We need to part ways. But we can part ways respectfully. One day, <clears throat> there's a possibility that we will meet each other again. If I did not behave rudely, if I treated the person with respect, we can still be civilized, right? We can still be friends. We can still have a very good interaction with one another. And who knows? Maybe it's a starting point of a new chapter in a developing, improving relationship. But if you invest in not so good words, invest in hurtful treatments, now remember, what goes around comes around. Meaning, yes, you meet this person now. By some uh, orchestration of God, you will meet each other again. But how will you interact with that person if not so good things have been there in your relationship? Every time I look at this, I remember Joseph in the Old Testament. He was badly treated by his brothers. And then they met each other again. Different now, different situation. He was administration of food, administrator of foods. And his uh, brothers were asking to get food from Egypt. He could have withheld that from them. He could have taken revenge. But if that happened, he couldn't have spent the last years, uh, his, the last years of his dad with it. He could have missed out on that. Nasayang sana. His father was still alive. He could have missed out on that opportunity uh, to be with his dad in the last years of his father. And yes, the relationship as a family was not ideal. It was not perfect, a non-perfect human relationship. But if you look at the last chapters of Genesis, it was better. He was able to care for his family. They lived where Joseph has lived. And then, sa Tagalog, ang sabi pa, naikalong pa niya yung, pamangki, yung apo niya sa pamangkin. The relationship was far from each other, talaga. 
it was uh, there was a distance that separated them but it became closer nagkaroon ng improvement because of increasing relationship capacity the third increase your exposure capacity there are times that there will be emergencies there are times there will be needs that need to be diba, addressed and you're there yes there are times we think about our own welfare we get tired we don't want the annoyance or probably we don't want the discomfort uh, let me give an illustration ministry for example uh, this is an actual story i uh, had this interaction with a person in church he was sour graping sabi niya pastor i can't understand our leaders especially our pastor they chose musicians especially the guitarist he was not very good then I'm thinking to myself, why is he saying this to me? I don't even know him. <laughs> but uh, definitely he was ranting about it. No? So, sabi ko, why? Do you know how to play? Ah, pastor, compared to that guy, I know how to play well. Okay. So, me, I don't want to leave things hanging. Nagmarites ako dun sa pastor. <laughs> sabi ko, uh, pastor, somebody's uh, saying uh, the, the, the guy that was uh, chosen to play the guitar is not as good as him. Pastor, that's exactly what we're thinking. We discovered that he was a very good guitar player. But we were asking the congregation who would like to volunteer their talents to help in the music ministry. There were those who raised their hands and he would not. And so we chose the ones who volunteered later on to discover that he is actually a very, very good guitar player. And now he keeps on sour graping. And when we had these people trained, and many of them were sent to some music camps, he was all the more sour graping. He should have been the one sent there. But you did not volunteer. You could have been used mightily in the work of God, but you prevented yourself from being known. People are not prophets, uh, uh, meaning they don't know how to read your mind. They don't know how to read your heart. They don't know what the future holds for you. It is only through God's giving you the ability to see these things will you be able to do so. But when they're looking at him, they don't know anything about what his future holds for him and what capabilities he has. But you know what? It, if he simply volunteered himself, he could have been part of the team and he could have been used. And I think that would have minimized his sour graping. Remember, increase your exposure capacity. And... Bottom line, increase your character capacity. You cannot control the situation. You cannot control other people. But there's only one person you can control in that crowd. And who is that person? Yourself. We can control our behavior, our reactions, our attitudes. And if we're having a hard time with that as well, we can ask God to help us to have that fruit of the Spirit, which is called self-control so that our behavior will become better. But we have to increase our character capacity. Now, I would like to leave behind two verses. First is Galatians 6, 9. Let us not be weary in doing good, for we will reap in due season if we do not give up. In practicing patience and the other stuff that the Bible tells us, instructions coming from God that we should do, we should uh, develop in our lives. Sometimes it's a hard thing to do. Yes, but as much as it's hard, it's not impossible. It is just a matter of wanting to comply. Yung kagustuhan mo ring sunod, and yung kagustuhan mo ring gawin yan. Right? I may not be perfect, but I can be obedient. I may not be perfect, but I can agree and comply and willingly do something. And that is what God is expecting from us. And so, there's another version of Proverbs that we will be looking at. Proverbs 14.29. Very strong language, but uh, learn from this. A patient person is very smart. And a quick-tempered person makes stupid mistakes. I do hope, brothers and sisters in Christ, as instructed in Scripture, we do learn how to love one another. We need to bear with one another. And we need to apply patience. God bless you all and good morning. We thank the Lord for His message for us this morning and I believe this has been very timely.
for many of us. And so may we truly be God's children who uh, keep our patience as we look to the Lord for our trust. Uh, and as a way to help us as well uh, is to remind ourselves of who we believe in and what we believe in. So may, we, may I invite everyone to please rise as we declare together our faith using the Nicene Creed. Church, what do we believe in? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Conceived by the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now kneel for the prayers. Our Heavenly Father, you see how challenging it is for each and every one of us to continue in our mission as your people. Lord, we are beset on every side by conflicts and hardships, and we truly need your patience. Lord, may the church continue to persevere and not lose heart. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. Father, we praise you for the successful election of our new bishop this week, and we pray that you will uh, strengthen him and grant him wisdom, as well as all of the shepherds around the world. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. Father, we continue to lift up to you our country. Lord, we ask for your mercy. We pray that you will give wisdom to our world leaders. Lord, we pray that you will give them a desire, a genuine desire to serve the people. And so we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Father, with so many things that will take away our energies. We ask for your grace. Lord, we need your strength to go on and to shine this light for you. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. And we lift up to you many who are sick right now, among our members, our family members, and uh, those also who are grieving, those who are suffering, have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. And finally, we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us now take a moment to pray for our own needs and those of others.
Lord, hear the prayers of thy people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hebrews 4, verses 14 and 16 says, Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray you of your mercy. Forgive what we have been, amend what we are, direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Let us receive the forgiveness of our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. As we prepare for the Lord's table, let us now pray together the prayer of humble access. Together, most merciful Lord, we do not trust in our own merits to come to your table, but in your boundless grace. You have invited us to come to the table of the kingdom of heaven. Help us to partake of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we may evermore live in him and he in us. Amen. Let us now rise for the peace. Amidst the conflicts of life, it is good to hear about the peace that we have in our Lord, especially when he says, peace. I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us now greet one another with the Lord's peace. We may now be seated. Psalm 50, verse 14 says, Offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. And now as we have our offertory, let us be reminded to present with gladness the offerings and oblations of our lives. So we will be singing hymn 307, Use Me Today.
Let us all rise. Let us now come to the Lord with great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and dark angels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Shall we now kneel before the Lord? Our holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us in your image. And when we fell into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for all mankind to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And so, with glad hearts, we proclaim to the world the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and an ending life in Him. But sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, 
constancy and peace. In that last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with much thanksgiving. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ keep you generous unto everlasting life. Keep you everlasting life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you generous unto everlasting
Let us now kneel and pray. Let us now ask the Lord's grace as we pray together the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now receive the blessing. May the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. seated for some announcements. Okay, first off, uh, we uh, would like to uh, praise the Lord for our recently concluded diocesan convention this week. Okay, so it was held last March 12 and 13, and part of which was the election of our new diocesan bishop. Uh, and here is his picture. He is Bishop-elect James Boliget. Okay, so we have been praying for him, uh, for, for this, for several weeks. Uh, and the Lord has led uh, Bishop James to be our new bishop. So uh, just to quickly introduce him, Bishop-elect James had been serving as a clergy in our diocese since 1993. Okay, so he became the rector and dean of our National Cathedral, so that's the one in I Rodriguez in St. Luke's, uh, beside St. Luke's Hospital, okay, since uh, in 2008. And then recently, he's been uh, called to pastor in St. Barnabas at Tagaytay and the neighboring co congregations in Batangas, Cavite, and also at the PNP Academy. Okay, so uh, he has also served in almost all the committees in our diocese including key committees such as our diocesan council, so it's like the vestry of the entire diocese, uh, the standing committee, which serves as an advisory committee to the bishop, and also the commission on ministry, which is in charge of equipping potential clergy people in our diocese. Okay, so he's uh, very much qualified, and we praise God for uh, his service and willingness to serve as our new bishop. So let's continue to pray that God would bless uh, Bishop James and our diocese in the years to come. Okay. Second announcement, uh, please also be reminded of our, uh, that next week is already our Palm Sunday service. Okay, so next Sunday is our Palm Sunday service. And then the following after that will be our Holy Week services. Okay, so our Palm Sunday service will still be at 8.30, so regular time. Uh, and then our Holy Week services are there for us to see and also in our flyers. So take note of the time and the schedule. Okay, so yeah, we praise God for, for these things that are happening in our diocese uh, and in our church. And let's continue to pray for one another and be patient and bear with one another as we move forward as a church. Okay, so now as we close our service, may I invite everyone to rise and let's sing together hymn 320, asking God to really make us a blessing.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. God bless everyone.